بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم سید عاکف شاہ لیکچرر فائنینس ایٹ انسٹیٹیوٹ آف بزنس اسٹڈیز کوہارٹ یونیورسٹی آف سائنس اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی ٹائٹل آف دس کورس از پرنسپل آف اکاؤنٹنگ دا کورس کوڈ فار دس سبجیکٹ از بی ایس ون ہنڈریڈ سکسٹی ون دس از اوور لیکچر نمبر نائنٹین اینڈ دا ٹاپک فار ٹو ڈیز ڈسکشن از accounting cycle under the umbrella of which particularly we'll discuss how to post journal entries to the ledger accounts and then to further make a trial balance so basically accounting cycle comprises of a series of steps that needs to be followed as we have already discussed how to journalize the entries in the journal journal So the next step is to pick up those entries from journal journal and to make the ledger accounts. The outline of this lecture will address the following three main agendas. Number first is to understand the accounting cycle in detail with the help of a diagram. Secondly, posting the journal entries to the ledger accounts. As we have already discussed that certain economic events occur in the business organization that requires the accounting accountant to make a journal entry in the proper format and according to the gap principles and that specific format is known as journal journal by journal we means that it consists of the record of the entries which should be in the chronological orders which means that at what specific date a particular event occurs at the same very date that entry is required to be posted or written down in the journal journal so after making this journal journal which is which consists of a series of daily routine day to day activities and transactions that has uh, a mess up kind of record in the accounting books so therefore the next step is to make the ledger accounts and the ledger accounts are the accounts that will address one specific account titles and for that specific time period it will consist of all the entries related to that one particular account so basically once again i'll refer to the accounting definition which was accounting is an art of recording classifying summarizing and then communicating the results to decision makers so the next next section of the accounting decision was to classify the record accounting is the art of recording and then to classify those financial transactions so basically that classification is the second step of the accounting cycle which is known as the ledger accounts so we will see how to make the ledger accounts in the in the form of t accounts and as well as in the running balance format form last but not the least the discussion will conclude that is how to pick up those final balances in the ledger accounts in order to make an ad adjusted trial balance and this trial balance will let us know whether we have correctly entered our entries in the journal journal and then later on if we had made the proper correct entries recording in the ledger accounts let's discuss one by one in detail here we have a complete accounting cycles diagram which starts from journalizing the transactions that is to record the economic events in the proper format of journal journal from this journal journal we have to pick up the entries and to post them into the ledger account which is the classification of accounting entries so basically the important step is the first one which is to analyze the economic transaction 
and to generalize the first uh, generalize the accounting entry into the proper format of journal journal by following the double entry accounting system that is each debit will have a corresponding same amount of credit entry so if we have if we had made a mistake in uh, in our first step to generalize the economic event properly this mistake will continue on to the ledger account and then further into the trial balance and it will lead towards a mismatch in our trial balances so this mistake will continue on to the next step until we have to make certain year end adjustments and to rectify that mistake only then we can lead towards the next step of having an adjusted trial balance and from this adjusted trial balance we'll make financial statements and later on close down the nominal accounts and then finally we will be able to make our after closing trial balance so the important step is the step number one to journalize the economic event properly and correctly into the journal journal the rest of the task will be quite easier so let's move towards our second step of posting entries into the ledger accounts so i strongly urge here to the listener of this lectures to go back to my previous lectures because we are going to continue the same example as this is an accounting cycle so we have to adopt to the same economic events and the journal journal in order to reach towards the next step and to understand how to make the ledger accounts because in isolation we cannot make ledger accounts we need the economic events data along with that the proper correct journal journal so let's see how to do and how to continue our JJ Learn Care Service example in order to understand and to make the ledger accounts. Before delving deep into the topic, what is this all about posting journal entries to the ledger account? By posting, we mean that it involves copying basically. You have to copy the information from the journal what we have recorded with the help of certain economic events. So simply posting is copying the information from our journal journal and to classify them into the ledger accounts. Here we had our previous example, what we have discussed in the previous few couple of lectures. And we have arrived at our final journal journal in this format. At the top, we have to mention the journal journal. It has four basic columns. The leftmost is pertaining to the date section. The next one is for account titles and explanation. The second last is for the debit entry. And the final column was for the credit record entries. As we have already explained that the journal journal is the chronological record of the economic events so therefore we can see that the my first entry should be written at the top and then the subsequent days entries should be written in the journal journal like one should not write down the my 18 transaction just after the my first and similarly one should not bring down this my second entry into the journal journal after my eight as this is a chronological record so therefore we have to follow the accounting principles now after coming up with the correct journal journal what we have to do is to post the entries into the ledger accounts for that purpose we have to copy the information from journal journal so what's the step you have to start scanning the journal journal properly As we have already discussed the balance sheet, so I assume that you are acquainted with the uh, solvency and order of liquidity. So therefore, in the just keep in your mind the structure and image of the balance sheet. 
which starts with the highly liquid assets of cash. So therefore, the first step will be to make the cash ledger. As a student, your task is to analyze the journal journal properly, starting from my first and to find out if there is any cash title available in the journal journal. So we have analyzed it and found that cash is mentioned in our first entry and it has a debit balance. Similarly, you have to go to the next entry and to find out if there is cash involved in, the, in that particular event. And yes, of course, cash is once again involved in my second and it has a credit entry. So you have to analyze each account and each journal entry thoroughly and carefully so that you must not omit any cash related entry in your journal journal to be posted into the cash ledger. So the next entry is of my eight and once again the cash title is there and it has a credit balance of 2000. Similarly, so on and so forth we had entries up to my 31st but for the understanding purposes, I have only mentioned due to the space limitation up to my 18, but there is no cash involved. So therefore we will omit this my 18 entry. So after scanning the journal journal thoroughly, now you are in a position to either adopt the running balance method for making the ledger account or to use the T shape of ledger account. Let's discuss the running format to make the ledger accounts. That is to classify the entries into one place which are related with each other. As we have analyzed my first transaction, which is which involves the cash transaction. So we have to pick up this value and to plug it into the relevant position in order to make the cash ledger. So what's the mechanism and procedure to make a cash ledger? We have to mention the journal ledger title at the top under the under which we have to mention the cash title in the second line which is referring towards all the entries related with cash only. So basically this cash ledger has four columns starting with the date then we have a debit column, second last is a credit column and finally we will have a running balance column. What we need to do is to pick up the relevant date that involves cash in it in the journal journal. So we have to pick up that specific date and to mention it in the ledger account accordingly as we have done in this case. After that, we have to analyze either the cash was having a debit entry or a credit entry. After analyzing, we come up that it was a debit balance. So we have to pick up the debit balance from the journal journal and to plug it into the ledger account of cash in the proper column of debit as we have done the same. We knew that there is no more cash involved in this date on that specific date. So therefore we will leave the credit column blank and then to, the, uh, then to mention the final balance of cash ledger at the date of my first in the balance column as mentioned over here. So 8000 was debit nothing was in the credit column so therefore the balance shows as $8000. In the same fashion we can make another ledger account as on my first another title was capital stock which is pertaining to the equity section of the company. So once again we have to follow the same method journal ledger then to mention the specific title of the ledger account that is capital stock it has four basic column date debit column credit column and its balance 
So what we are trying to do is to pick up this data from the journal journal. The specific date was my first. So therefore my first was written into the ledger at that specific year. Capital stock was not having a debit balance in the journal journal. So therefore the debit column in the ledger account has been left as blank. However, the credit amount which was $8,000 will be picked up from the journal journal and to, to be posted into the credit column under the capital stock ledger account. Finally, what you have to do is to sum up either to set off the debit with the credit. So there was nothing in the debit column. However, there was 8,000 in the credit columns. So therefore the balance of this capital stock is having a credit balance of $8,000. So this is the procedure how you are going to pick up the relevant accounting entries from your journal journal and to post them at one place under the specific title of ledger account. This was our second entry that involves cash transaction in it on my second. We got another cash transaction, but this time it has a credit balance into the column. So therefore our cash ledger will have a credit entry. Similarly, the next entry was of my aid that was having a cash title of $2,000. And it was mentioned in the credit section of the journal journal. So therefore, our cash ledger will once again get a credit entry in the running balance account. So let's see what the cash account looks like after posting the cash portion of this transaction for the JJ Lawn Care Service. So after analyzing the complete transaction, what we have already discussed in the previous lecture, so whatever transaction was involving the cash entry, we had picked up those entries from those uh, economic events and has accumulated all the cash transaction under the umbrella of one specific cash ledger account. So after accumulating all the related transactions in the T-shape, we got a cash ledger. So the cash ledger looks like as mentioned before you you have to mention the cash at the top of the cash ledger account this t shape means that the this account shape is actually in the form of english letter t so on my first we have to pick up the relevant entry from the economic event this left hand side is pertaining to the debit section of the T-shaped ledger account and the right hand side is referring towards the credit entries pertaining to the cash amounts or cash ledgers or cash accounts. So the left hand sides are actually the receipts which are ne needed to be mentioned on the debit side and the right hand side is actually the credit side so therefore the payments of the cash will be recorded on the right hand side. As we knew that the owner has actually invested $8,000 into the business. So therefore the $8,000 was debited. On 25th of May, once again, cash was debited with $75 when the uh, purchasers of some of the tools and equipment had actually paid out their debt obligation to our company. So the cash level was once again increased. Finally, on May 29, the company has delivered certain services to the customer and has obtained cash in return for those services. So therefore, the cash was debited. At the other hand side, on 2nd of May, the company has paid $2,500. So the cash level was decreased and according to the diamond rule when there is decrease in any asset it will be recorded by a credit entry. So in the same fashion for the next 8th of May the company has paid 
on my 28 $150 credited on my 31st $50 for gasoline expenses in the entries for those economic event I will refer you towards my second uh, previous lecture which will which has actually addressed all those economic events in the journal journal and finally the company has paid $200 in dividends so therefore all the payments have been written at the right hand side because the payments actually decrease the cash level so therefore when there is decrease in cash or any asset it should be recorded with a credit entry and whenever there is an increase in the cash level it will be recorded as a debit entry so what you have to do is to accumulate both the sides you have to sum up this side left hand side and as well as the right hand side you will get two different values for that one value over here x and the y value over here after accumulating you have to diff to you have to find difference of both values and whatever side will be greater you have to mention the balance at that particular side so here the excess amount is actually on the debit side of this column or this t shape of cash ledger account so therefore the final balance is 3925 and it is actually the debit balance and we know very well that normally all the assets show debit balances in order to understand the ledger accounts in a sophisticated fashion you can make any accounts ledger in a proper running format basis as mentioned before you so this is actually a cash ledger so therefore at the top you have to mention that specific accounts title it has basically four column the leftmost is of date column the second one is for debit column and then we are following the monetary principle as mentioned the dollar sign the second last or the third column is pertaining to the credit entries related with the cash account in our journal journal and the last column is related with the balance of the cash so this account basically tells you about the running balances in your cash ledger so starting with my first as you have to analyze the journal journal thoroughly and then to figure out the cash related transaction in the journal journal so simply pick up those values and plug them in the cash ledger as mentioned over here so on my first the cash was having a debit balance so therefore we have mentioned copied the information from the journal journal and simply plug that amount in the debit column as on my first nothing was there on the credit side related with cash so therefore the cash credit column has been left as blank so therefore the balance of the cash at my first was eight thousand dollars after analyzing the second day that is of my second we had a credit amount of $2,500 in the journal journal however there was nothing on the debit side so therefore we have to understand this step as already the first balance is debit for the cash and the second cash second uh, on my second the company might have paid certain amount of money in while they have purchased the lawn mower machines so therefore that payment of 2500 is actually a credit entry so this is a credit balance and the previous balance was having a debit balance so therefore you have to set off and find out the difference so as we know that 8000 is far greater than the 
2500 credit the remaining amount will be once again a debit balance so we have set off the payment against the receipts of eight thousand dollar the next was of my eight nothing was on debit and once again the company has paid two thousand dollars so therefore it will further reduce our previous balance so just simply subtract this 2000 because this is a credit entry from the debit balance and therefore the remaining amount is 3500 on my 25 the cash was having a debit entry in the journal journal so therefore we have debited picked up that amount and plug in our debit column nothing was there in the credit entry on this specific date so at this time already we are having a debit balance of 3500 so therefore we have to add this 75 into 3500 this time so our running balance will be 3575 our next entry was of my 28 in the journal journal and our cash was credited with $150 because we had paid on our liability named as accounts payable. So this time it's a credit entry and the balance is of debit nature. So therefore we have to subtract the credit entry from the previous balance and then to mention the resultant remaining amount in our balance column. So the same method has been adopted for the rest of the entries and therefore after paying the final amount which was 200 as dividend payments and as we know that when you are going to pay the cash the cash level will decrease and we know that when there is decrease in assets it is recorded as a credit entry so after picking this entry from the journal journal we have plugged it into the ledger account of credit column finally we have to subtract it from the previous balance and the resultant balance for our cash balance cash ledger will actually be $3,925 as a DR means debit balance. So when the, all the entries have been encountered and properly picked up from the journal journal and then to posted and posted them into the ledger account, we have to Put a double line beneath our final balance which will further be uh, taken carry forward to the next step when we will make our trial balance so we are actually interested in our final balance of each ledger account because this final balance will be taken with us towards the next step to make the trial balance in order to find out if we have done our all entries and posted the entries into the ledger accounts properly and in a correct way. This type of ledger format is referred to as a running balance format for making the ledger account and this is as opposed to the T account. So we have two options either to make the ledger with the help of a running balance format method or in another way we can also use the T shape to make our ledger accounts. In similar fashion, we have adopted the T format to make the ledgers of each title. As we are continuing the previous examples, so we have to pick up the relevant account titles involved in the journal journal or in the journal entries and we have made the t-shaped ledger accounts so one at uh, my 18 there was a debit entry for accounts and on my 31st there was a credit entry on account receivable so after setting both the sides the additional amount which is a debit balance for account receivable is $75. You have to mention this balance and this will be carried forward to the next step.
Similarly, for tools and equipment, we have picked up the relevant entries whenever the tools and equipment was having a debit balance. So we have mentioned at the left hand side and whenever the tools and equipment in the journal journal was having a credit balance. So we have mentioned the right hand side in the T shape of ledger account. Therefore, the final debit balance come up with us for tools and equipment is $2,650. And as we are following the order of liquidity, that is to mention the highly liquid asset first and then to the non-current assets. Therefore, the truck has been mentioned at the end. It was having 15,000 debit balance when the company has purchased the truck. So therefore, nothing was there in any other entry in this the month of May in 2003. So therefore, the final balance of the truck will be $15,000. Similarly, for notes payable, when there is increase in the notes payable, as arrowhead, arrowhead upward, it will have a credit entry. So we have picked up this notes payable from the journal journal and plug it in the right place. Nothing was there throughout the month against notes payable accounts. So therefore there was no debit entry. Therefore the final balance of this ledger account will be $13,000. The next liability accounts payable was having two entries on the journal journal. One was on 11th of May with a credit entry of $300 and a debit entry on this liability on my 28. So after setting off both the sides, the right hand side is greater in numbers. So therefore the remaining amount as liability on this account payable is $150. Then we had made the capital stock T ledger. Only one entry was there. So therefore one balance has been mentioned at the right hand side, which is a credit balance. And this will be the balance we will take with us in the next step. Finally, the remaining four ledger accounts were capital stock as already discussed. The sales revenue when the company has sold its services and collected cash on my 29 uh, in the amount of $750. Then company has paid the dividend. So the payment of dividend actually reduces the owner equity. So therefore it was having a debit entry. Finally, the gasoline expenses were paid by the company. And we have seen that the gasoline expense was an expense. And when there is increase in expenses, it is usually recorded as a debit entry. The final balance for gasoline will be 50. For dividend, it will be 200, same. And for revenue, it will be $750. So this is the way how you can make the ledger accounts by simply picking the relevant information from the journal journal and then to post them in the ledger accounts. So after uh, posting the entries, journal entries into the ledger accounts, now we are in a position to plug these values or carry forward these final balances of the ledger accounts into the next step, which is to make an unadjusted trial balance. By trial balance, we mean that we are going to have a trial of our balances that either we had made correctly posted the entries into the ledger accounts or we had made any mistake. So from where these balances have been taken, you have to mention the, uh, let me explain the procedure. That is to, that is you have to mention the company's name properly then unadjusted trial balance and the specific date which is my 31st 2003 and then you have to follow the order of liquidity that is to mention the highly liquid asset at the top starting with cash account receivable tools and equipment trucks and then to mention the liabilities then the owner's equity and finally the revenue and the expenses will be mentioned so the first column will be pertaining to the debit column and the right side will be our credit column. So from where we have pick up this value of 3925, this has been obtained from our previous step, which is step number two, 
making the ledger account basically this is the accounting cycles third step which is to make the trial balance of our ledger accounts final balances so let me counter check it out here we have the final balance of cash ledger which is 3925 so therefore we have mentioned it properly at the right place let me counter check for capital stock it is mentioned in the credit column so let me counter check the capital stock and its balance is in the credit side so therefore the trial in the trial balance we have also mentioned in the credit side column there is a division between two sides so in the third step what you have to do is to pick up the final balances of the ledger account and to plug them by following the order of liquidity and the rule says that both the sides balances must be equal to each other that is all the debit must be equal to all the credit amounts in the trial balance and as mentioned that 21,900 at the at both sides so it has been proved that we had not made any mistake in our journal journal and as well as in posting those journal entry into the relevant ledger account balances i'll discuss in more detail this trial balance with the help of a numerical example in my subsequent lectures so this was all about how to make the ledger accounts in t shape and as well as in the running balance shape which will assist you to complete your next step of making the trial balance thank you very much for listening to this lecture if you have any question you are free to ask good luck for the day allah hafiz